I feel like Christmas is the time where people are like, you know what, maybe we won't have turkey. We'll do something a little different. Maybe we'll do beef. But what's next? Hmm? This, the greatest roast of all time. It's the time of the year again. The weather's getting colder and you know what that means. <laughs> that means that it's time to play in the winter snow to make your mark on the wintry holiday season. Like my book is making its mark on the New York Times bestseller list. Thanks to you, 40% off on Amazon, and it's a perfect gift for the holidays or a stocking. <laughs> Christmas is here! Ah! So as I was saying, when it comes to a holiday meal, whatever you celebrate, doesn't matter. But everyone's getting together and they're thinking probably that they're tired of turkey, or maybe not, maybe they make another turkey. Less to think about, probably dry too. Don't tell me your turkey breast is moist, okay? It's, it's probably not. That's okay, it's extremely difficult to get a turkey. A lot of the time people are like, oh, I don't want beef. I want something lighter because we're going to have all these sides and the pies. Blah, blah, blah. Well, okay, what about another bird? Hmm, something flying around and it quacks. Oh, a duck. But you know, not just any roast duck, okay? Let's put some culture, some refinement in it, and instead make a new holiday dinner. I wanna see this on everybody's menu, moving forward, Peking duck, and you can do it at home. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Righto. So there are three main elements here. The duck, of course, the honey plum sauce, and last but not least, the Chinese mandarin pancakes, which are sort of similar to a tortilla. I don't wanna hear the conversation, all right? I was like, oh, Josh, that's a tortilla. Ah, let's begin with our little ducky lucky. This might seem odd, but uh, you're gonna need a bike pump. Look, don't make this weird, okay? Essentially, you need to separate as much of the skin from the meat as possible. It helps with crispness. You can start by wiggling your fingers in there until it's mostly separated, but then I recommend using a bike pump to pump the air under the duck skin, starting at the base, nearest to the legs, underneath the breast, until it inflates nicely like this. As odd as this looks, and well, sounds, this is essential to giving this Peking duck its iconic crisp skin. Once it's done, you're gonna make a quick five spice Sichuan seasoning. By combining four tablespoons or 72 grams of kosher salt, two and a half tablespoons or 31 grams of granulated sugar, one tablespoon or five grams of Chinese five spice, and one and a half teaspoons or six grams of ground Sichuan peppercorns. No whisking this time. I decided to shake it, I guess. So, uh, shake it till Right. Season the duck underneath the skin, specifically not on the skin. And in the cavity, next get a large pot filled with about five quarts or 4.75 liters of water. Bring that to a boil over medium high heat and then immediately ladle that hot water onto the skin of the duck on every part where the skin covers. The breast, the legs, the thighs, the back, the wings, everything. This helps keep the skin crisp by rendering out the fat and making the skin nice and doit. Repeat that process until you've used all of your water. Next, let that air dry on a wire rack for about 10 minutes. And while that's air drying, in a small saucepan, combine two cups or 480 milliliters of water, two tablespoons or 24 grams of Chinese red vinegar, one tablespoon or 12 grams of Chinese black vinegar, and three tablespoons or 45 milliliters of Shaoxing wine. Oh, and also a quarter cup or 86 grams of maltose. Two very important notes about maltose. Number one, it can be found pretty easily at a lot of Asian grocery stores. And number two, it's extraordinarily annoying to work with. And I would recommend that you warm it up in a microwave or in a hot water bath unless you want to face sticky doom. Now bring that mixture to a boil over medium high heat and let that reduce for five minutes. Now your bird should be done air drying so pour half of that mixture all over the breast side of the duck and then again on the back side of the duck. Again like I said coating all of the skin. You do this if you want a skin so lacquered and beautiful you can see your reflection in it. Now you need to let this fella dry in the fridge overnight. How you do that is up to you. Mine had plenty of excess skin on the neck so I hooked it and hung it in the fridge. Sorry for any unsuspecting family members or roommates who open the fridge. Or of course you can use a tall boy and well, shove it in the uh, cavity and stand it up so it's back and breast isn't touching anything. So as previously described, overnight in the fridge to dry the skin. So it's roasting day, super duper easy. Get that there dry bird, spank it a little just to prove that it's dry to the production crew. Adjust your oven racks to be the bottom third of the oven. Preheat to 250 Fahrenheit. Get yourself a tall boy can of whatever the heck you got. Pour out all the associated liquid. You know, drink it if desired. It's 10 a.m. in this shot, so I did this. That's a joke. I had a sip though. Anyway, fill the can back up with water so it's weighted and gently, but lovingly, assist your duck down and onto the can. Make sure that it's standing up nicely and place it into your preheated oven, close the door, and using some sort of heat-proof tool like a butter knife, leave the door just slightly ajar. This allows airflow to keep the skin extra dry. Please note that if you leave your oven door open, crack that is, make sure it doesn't have any fancy digital gauges and buttons around the opening, otherwise you run the risk of destroying that. So maybe don't do that. You've been warned. And roast that bad boy for one hour and 10 minutes. Okay, the 
timer is rolling, let's get a move on with these mandarin pancakes. Literally just mix one cup or 240 milliliters of hot water with two cups or 300 grams of all-purpose flour. Carefully mix together until it forms a dough, then knead until it's nice and smooth, about five minutes. Then just let that bad boy rest covered with plastic wrap for 25 minutes. Then remove it from the plastic and divide it into evenly sized pieces. Form those pieces into big old balls and roll out your balls until you get a rough rectangle that's a quarter of an inch thick. Then using a three inch biscuit cutter, cut them into nice little circles and simply repeat until you've used all of your dough. And now you've got these cute little dough circles. Get yourself a cast iron pan, preheating over medium high, and I want that pan bone dry. See, we're kind of going in a tortilla-like direction. Anyway, this is where things get a little bit different. Take two circles of the dough, brush one of them lightly with toasted sesame oil, then stack another piece on top of the oiled side. Press them lightly together and then roll that bad boy out into a six inch disc. It's cool if the dough overlaps a little bit. Then just slap that brother into a hot pan and let it cook for 20 seconds or until it gets some nice color on it. Give it a flip and again, another 20 to 25 seconds on the other side. Once it's done, pull it off and pretty much immediately while it's still hot, separate the two at the seam to get two beautiful sesame scented. Chinese Mandarin pancakes. Then just rinse and repeat with all your dough and keep your bounty of pancakes in a nice hand knitted tortilla towel. What, Ulysses Grandma didn't knit you one? Sorry, pal. Okay, next up, the honey plum sauce. Yup, I got you doing work during this hour. You got the time, you can do it. Pit and chop one pound or 16 ounces of fresh plums, and yes, leave the skin on. Pop those bad boys into a medium saucepan and add two tablespoons or 38 grams of Feek Boy honey. Follow that with a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of rice vinegar, a quarter cup or 58 grams of granulated sugar, two tablespoons or 30 milliliters of Shaoxing wine. Nice form. Pop that bad boy onto a stove, set over medium high, let it come to a boil, and then just cook, stirring occasionally for about seven minutes or until you get a nice reduced syrup and the fruit is extremely soft. Then just pop that mixture into a blender and begin blending on high. Add in two tablespoons of 26 grams of dark soy sauce in a quarter cup or 52 grams of sriracha. Continue to blend until beautifully smooth and that is your sauce, which goes unbelievably well with many other things. Should you have any leftover? Right, so at this point, that hour and 10 for Daffy is finished. Now just increase that oven temp to 400 Fahrenheit and ideally on convection, leaving the door cracked and cook for 20 to 30 additional minutes, rotating halfway in between until you have a beautiful, stunning brown Peking duck. Pull that big boy duck out and prepare to do something rather odd but important. Let me preface with this first. Sure, you can serve the duck hole with your plum sauce, julienne, fresh cucumber, optional julienne, pickled carrots, and very thinly sliced green onion. Looks lovely, but my next option is much better. Upon removal of the duck, immediately remove all the skin, being careful not to burn yourself, before resting the duck, and place the crisp skin on a paper towel to drain. Then let your duck rest for 10 minutes. That's what I would prefer to do. Next, get yourself a sharp knife, slice up the breast and thigh meat evenly, about a quarter inch thick, and then you can either cut up the legs or leave them whole. Now, once you've sliced everything, Cut your skin to around the same width of your breast and thighs and layer the skin on top of all of the meat. Then place that on a serving tray, laying out nice and neat, you know, keep it clean, and serve immediately with the accoutrement previously described. The sauce, the cubes, the optional carrots, and the green onion. Of course, let's not forget about your Chinese pancakes. Don't be shy. Grab a flavored disc, fill it plentifully with meats, and with skin, cucumber, carrot, and of course, your green onion. And finally, a nice dollop of your sweet, sour, and spicy plum sauce. So sit down respectfully and enjoy a most pleasurable taste test. Bonjour! A little bit of salt on this, just to finish it off. You can also use smoked salt if you want to be a little fancy boy. Right, the flavor of this roasted duck is comparable to a rich stock. It punches you in the mouth with flavor, and you're like, ah! I'll have another bite. And that's how it should make you feel. Chinese pancakes, they're vehicles for flavor. They're not supposed to taste like much other than a little bit of sesame oil. This is how you serve it. A little bit of ducky. I like to mix the, the fatty and the lean. Cucumber, pickle carrot, green onion, plum sauce. You see this? You wanna put this in your mouth. Fun fact, if you Google Peking duck and it explains the pronunciation, need I say more? It's peaking, just like me. All things considered, what are you gonna make this holiday season? You gonna go to the old fashioned turkey? This is your answer. You don't need to go to a fancy shop. You could do it all at home. You might as well take the time to make this. Thank you. You wanna know what else has Daffy Duck crispier than ever before? B-roll. <laughs>
our guys in that is it. So we made our new holiday bird, Peking duck. Now, you don't have to have all the same accoutrement. You could have your mashed potatoes or whatever else you want with this. That's the beauty of Peking duck because it goes with so many different things. But I would recommend that you make some of the Chinese pancakes and you make some of the little pickles, put a little, little something, you know, and it's gonna be delicious. It'll be a nice change of pace for everybody. It feels exotic if it's not something you're used to. And I promise you, a picky Aunt Sally's gonna put a little bit of that in her mouth. She's enjoying that, I'll tell you, right? God dang now. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and uh, try to upgrade this holiday meal. All right.